Obviously, if you clicked on this video, you feel some type of way about Dana White's power slap, and I want to address it. So I went ahead and put out a question on my Instagram story asking my followers, if you don't like Dana White's power slap, tell me why. Hold nothing back. I'm not going to judge you. I want to know from the source and not some news article why you don't like it. And I'm going to look at that right now. But before we do that, make sure to sub to the channel, drop a like, and follow me on all the medias, TikTok, Instagram, here on YouTube. At Hey Picks. we've been growing like crazy. I appreciate every single one of you. Let's get it. I'll start off by saying I'm a fan of Power Slap League. I've watched every single episode. I've talked with a couple of the guys, great guys. I think it's a fun sport to watch. However, I can understand how people don't like it. At the same time, I'm not going to force them to watch it. I don't think anyone should be forced to watch anything. But I wanted to understand from my followers why they don't like to watch it. And after looking through the answers, I've come up with four very common complaints. And maybe a disclaimer, I will say most of my followers are fans of the UFC, fans of MMA in general. But for some reason, maybe it's just the world that I live in, the world that I view on social media and everything. The MMA community is probably one of the bigger haters of the Power Slap League. The number one complaint that I could identify is that it just gets too much coverage and people feel like it's getting rammed down their throats, which in large part has a lot to do with it being under Dana White, Dana White being the UFC president, and them using the UFC platform to promote Power Slap, which in reality, you kind of have to. And you know, if you're Dana White, what better way to promote Power Slap when you have that big platform of the UFC? At the same time, some of the viewers who don't like it, that's going to get really annoying. And after the past, you know, two, three months of that, they're going to be fed up with it. And for good reason. I mean, every time I open my Instagram, it's usually like a Power Slap vid that pops up right away. But you got to think, man, like if you have that platform and you're Dana White, you have to use that. It'd be like... It would be completely stupid to just not use that platform to build a business that's a startup business. It'd be dumb. Another thing with that, and I said this three months ago in a recent Power Slap video, this is the economy we live in. Like, you have to live on social media, and that's obviously where this sport has thrived. They, you know, they talk about billions of views online and how the, the TV ratings aren't doing very well, but that's not where this sport lives. Like, it lives on the internet. It's short clips. That's what Power Slap is. It's, it's instant. It's instant, instantaneous. So that's where it's going to live. That's where it's going to thrive. So that's where it has to be pushed. Second biggest complaint from the answers is that it doesn't take any skill, which I think is super easy to say if you've never done it and you've only watched like very short clips of it. I'm not going to sit here and say that it takes as much skill as like an MMA fight. But if you watch the season, you would see that nobody can just pick this up and be successful at it. Like you have to have practice at it. There's a lot of skill that goes into creating a big, powerful slap and being accurate while within the rules. If you watch the, the season, there are a lot of rules that you have to go through, and they break them all the time. It's not that easy. I think there's a lot more skill that goes into it. But if you just look at it from the outside, I, I can definitely see why you're just like, yeah, this is dumb. You could just, you're just hitting a, a stationary target with your hand as hard as you can. There's more rules to it, and if you break those rules, it's very detrimental. The third most common complaint is that it creates CTE and brain damage, and this is where it gets tricky. This is also where the instantaneous factor really backfires on them. Because it is so instant and isolated from any other event, it looks a lot more brutal than I think it really is. Don't get me wrong, there are some powerful ass slaps, something I would never want to do, and that's part of why I like it, because it's something so out there, like, I could not ever imagine myself doing that. But let's think about this. In any combat sport, boxing, MMA, Muay Thai, you could even throw football in there. There are certain risks that you just accept when you compete in those sports. And who am I to tell any other man what he can and cannot do, what he can and cannot participate in? I would even go as far as to say, like, that's pretty disrespectful to actually think another man can't make a choice for himself and that you are actually the one smart enough to make choices for him. You're basically calling that guy too dumb for his own good. If you're going to be upset about someone in this organization, I think the athletes are probably the last people that you should be upset about. That just seems so dumb to me. If they got the guts to compete in this sport, 
go let them do it because I guarantee your ass wouldn't do it and I certainly will not, but I damn sure will watch. The fourth most common complaint is that it's just simply not fun to watch and it's very repetitive. Now, what I'll say about this one is you have to give the sport time to create characters, to create storylines that people want to tune in to watch. It's the same thing with MMA. You're only gonna watch a fight if there's a certain person you wanna watch or a certain couple that you wanna watch go at it. And I can tell you from watching the show, there are some very exciting fights in this finale that I cannot wait for. You could say it's repetitive, but isn't every sport repetitive? You know, after a while, it's really the same motions. It's just the unknown that gets the intrigue. And I will agree, when I started watching the series, it seemed like it was like knockout after knockout. Like, there's no chance that the guy taking the hit is going to be able to take the hit. It's just a clean knockout every time. Not the case. Dude, watch the season. There's a lot of unknowns that go into every slap, into every match. And that is what makes it intriguing. Those are the four most common complaints about Power Slap League. Thank you for watching. I want to say, Power Slap finale is on this Saturday. Personally, I'm excited. I'm going to be coming out with my predictions for the card in a different video. I wanted to make this video because after watching the press conference today for the Power Slap League, it really just felt like it was a... A ceremony for a defense of the Power Slap League. They were just having to defend everything and everything. I feel like that's just how it's been the past two or three months. Like, I just want to sit back and, and enjoy it and stop having Dana have to, like, explain why this isn't bad over and over again. I'm just kind of over it at that point. I just want to watch them, watch them compete. I think that it's a fun sport to watch, whether you like it or not. I don't care. Like, I like it. You don't have to like it. It is what it is, but I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for watching, everybody, at Picks on all those social medias. If you're into MMA and you like the UFC, this Power Slap is not the only thing I cover. I cover a lot of the UFC. That's really what the main premise of Picks is, to cover UFC. So post shorts every day on this channel. Hit the subscription button and follow on the social medias. But if you like the UFC or into UFC betting, go follow the double leg on YouTube. We go over the full card every single week for the UFC and give our predictions there. You can join our premium to get our bets as well. Thank you for watching, guys. Looking forward to the Power Slap finale this weekend. See you next time.